Hello everyone and welcome back to my career playthrough in Juno New Origins. We had picked up a contract for a Niobe flyby and I didn't realize that that was actually the moon of the Mars equivalent in the game, uh, not a moon of Drew, which is our Earth equivalent. Uh, but yes, that's actually exactly what I wanted anyway, so uh, no problems there. I wanted to go to another planet and we are going to go to another planet. And also I am going to try to do it from the village pad. Uh, I felt very guilty about using the bigger pad last time, and so we will make a smaller rocket, and I've found out that we don't need such a huge amount of mod propellant, and this time we're gonna make a probe, uh, a, a real little probe, and we're not going to have the nose cone tank cheat thing. So we're going to try this, this is just a flyby, and we can't really use an aero capture well, we could use an aero capture around the Mars equivalent, uh, starts with a C, I forget the name of it. Uh, Celero, Celero. So, we could do, uh, aero capture around Celero, but it'd probably take a few tries, uh, to get that right, and, um, we'd need the heat shield, and on the first few tries, it's likely that we're going to be landing on Celero. <laughs> so, we're probably not going to, or we might not capture at all. So, it's safer to do a pulsive capture and that's what I'm planning and we want to make this small and we're not going to have as much RCS thrust so right now we have 25 kilograms I feel like 5 would be enough and we'll have a much smaller probe core all our volume will be battery but we don't need that much battery so I wonder how small I can make this that's a 400 newton engine. That's pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the tank below it, and we'll put it all in a fairing this time. We're not going to use the nose cone cheat. Now, Mustang51 mentioned that these nozzles were cheaper, and that these were just more sophisticated. Do the work of five normal RCS nozzles because they actually gimbal. But I like the look of these more. <laughs> so, that's the rough thing. Uh, yeah, visually, these are not so hot, because eventually I'm gonna tilt them, right? Uh, so, like, let, let me give you a for instance. Uh, the reason being is that I'm going to want to rotate some so they're facing like that on the side. And then it just looks weird, because it looks like they're coming out from nowhere, right? And... That's why it's better to use these, because at least they look like they're a full engine. And these it will just look awkward if I place them the way I've placed those, which is the way I want to place them. So that's why I'm not using them, even though they're cheaper, and why I didn't consider using them initially, because they're sort of surface mount. They're more like what you would use for a shuttle, um, and not for a probe. You would rarely see something conformal like that on a probe. 1.44 kilometers per second. We didn't need them to be that powerful, and we've made the probes smaller. 50 newtons will be fine. I wish they were cheaper when I made them smaller and less powerful, though. But we're gonna be going further away from the sun, so we want to keep that in mind. Price is 402,000, though, because of the RCS thrusters. Uh, you know what? I, I can make the bottom ones not like that. That is a lot cheaper. Okay, Mustang, I'm gonna just change them all. <laughs> uh, looks, I can't justify it, that kind of cost based on looks. I mean, it's 52,000 without those. I'll just, I'll just spite it and we'll deal with the fact that it looks weird with them poking out. I'm trying to make it so they don't blow at the solar panel. But we need them to be effective in roll, so... Alright, let me give up on those. Let me just see our center of mass right now. Uh, let's move these to center of mass. Roll thrusters are better when they're at the center of mass. I mean, we really are doing an excessive amount of roll control. Here. But... 
you can also sort of have roll duplicate another axis sometimes. So it's okay. Okay. We've made things pretty small. And let me remove that huge center mass indicator. We've got 2.25 kilometers per second now. And it is a nice tight probe, 258 kilograms. This looks like a nice probe to another planet. Now, we are going to want a transfer stage and a full rocket. So let's see what we can build as far as that's concerned. But first we need a... Um, a fairing. I mean, I think we need an inner stage first. That's how it works here. Inner stages are also payload adapters, I suppose. Okay, and then there are side fairings. And the top fairing. I don't know if I want the fairing base to be that small. Oops, Z fighting. We'll ignore that. Because probably we'll want the bottom to actually be wider. The shading is not pleasant, but... Oh, it doesn't really read the width of it. Drew vacuum will be fine. And we'll focus on this stage. That's... So, I'm expecting to use... I'm expecting to use about 1.5 kilometers per second to get our transfer, but we'll pack two. But we also need to complete orbit with this stage. So... Burn time of two minutes is a little bit short. Now, we don't want to make it too tall, otherwise we won't fit the village pad. And that's getting to the limit of efficiency. Let's use the bell nozzle so I can configure things a little bit tighter. And we will need RCS on this stage as well. So... I could have probably unlocked some extra technology, but I don't feel like I need it. So once again, we're not using gyros, just a note. That is intentional, it's not because I did not know gyros existed, <laughs> so... We could just have four of them at the bottom. I mean, sorry, eight of them all together at the bottom. I mean, they won't control roll great in this location, but it'll probably be all right. That seems like a good stage right there. Right, now we have to see if we can pack enough into that 10 meter limit in order to do the job. On the bright side, we can have negligible nozzle for surface purposes. It might be better to have multiple engines just to make them shorter. That's 10 meters it says there, but that probably means 10 point something. So I'll nudge that just a little bit. Now it says 10.00. I'll try and get to 9.9. .9. It seems to know what I'm doing. Oh, 9.95, fine. Okay. And I want all sorts of symmetry there. That's 2.0 on the starting thrust to weight ratio. Now we probably have radial decouplers, so I could put side boosters to add more delta V if I want to. Now it's still reading 2.35. Uh, let me just double check the fuel line stuff. I mean, if I take these off, we get 2.15. Adding these only adds about 200 meters per second. Oh, now it says width is 4 meters. Maybe we should just make it like N1 style. Yeah, we'll just make it N1 style. It's gonna be horrible. Aerodynamically, it's just a disaster, but... Um... I don't know. This is pretty rough. This is pretty rough. Yep. Yeah. But we'll try it. We'll take it to the village pad. Oh, um... Village runway, no. 
Village pad, 3 meters, 10 meters, doesn't have a weight limit. And we're going to see if we can get out to Niobe. So, um, first of all, we need to get the right phase angle with Niobe, or Solero more precisely. This is almost right. Maybe they gave the contract deliberately when it was going to be close to correct, just to make it easy on people. But uh, assuming that that's Mars, uh, we want a 45 degree angle. Um, the, the gap between, it all depends on the gap between the orbit that you're starting with, which is Drew's orbit, and the orbit we're going to, which is uh, Solero's orbit. And then assuming that uh, Tidos is like Jupiter, the gap would be that we want is, we want Tidos to be 90 degrees ahead, assuming it's the Jupiter re relationship. Uh, for Solero, uh, we want 45 degrees, assuming that it's the same as Mars's relationship to Earth. So, then it looks not too different. So I'm gonna time warp a little bit until we get here. Uh oh. Ah, oh, uh, fireworks had a limit. No, it's fine. And this all depends on how much lead time you need to give our target planet during the trip there. There's a calculation for it and I could do it, but we will just avoid that for now. Okay, so I don't care about fireworks, we're doing this. Let's have a uh, lock current heading on. And otherwise, I probably should have tuned down the gimbling on some stuff, but uh, we don't want the RCS to immediately be enabled. That could do without. Alright, and let me just... Lock heading, I'm going to put on... I, I would like to use T. I I'm not going to use translation mode for a long time, so I think we'll set T to be... Because that'll be more like what I'm used to. Okay, here we go, and launch. I'm actually gonna do a roll program just for my ease of piloting. One reason I was uh, wiggly before was I didn't do a roll program. Roll program allowing it to align the target axis with just one axis on the joystick helps, so I can just push down on the joystick and that'll make it easier. The inclination of the village pad should make any problems for transferring out. There are some subtleties, but mostly it gets cancelled out because our orbit around the sun is the main thing. Okay, staging. That'll work. Okay, 107 by 91. Okay, so now, interplanetary transfer plotting. We have Solero targeted. And we're going to want to boost out. We're really close to where we want to boost out. Um, right around here-ish. I want to boost up. And we want to line up with Drew's outward bound trajectory, but it also depends on timing. Um, whoa, that's way overdoing it. Um, Alright, um, there's a little bit of an inclination gap. We may have to wait in orbit just because we're so close to it. Oh, approach info like this. Okay, so we need to be a little bit over to that side. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably have to do it on the next orbit. There must be a way to do this without zooming in and out all the time. 200, 100... It's actually closest over here, 1,100. 1, there it's uh, minimum 770. Well, we see we have an encounter. And that's mostly an inclination gap right there. So I'll tackle that on a mid-course correction. And we, uh... 
We will focus on the plan burn right now. Lock that. And so we're going all the way around. Burn time not available. Why is that? Well, I mean, stage delta V is 1.34 kilometers per second and the delta V is 1.4. 47 seconds is the stage time. So that's pretty much all we need. Except for the time we need to turn. Okay, so time we need for turning, as a matter of fact, here. Okay, that's off and ignition. Probably didn't need such big mob propellant tanks here either, but off we go, our first interplanetary journey. Okay, uh, let's hope staging's right. Staging. Okay. And we have 80 meters per second. Accuracy not recommended. <laughs> hmm. It's fine. It's the maneuver's all the way over there. It's all gone pear shaped. But I believe in prograde. Because I plotted it as a prograde burn only. Hyperbolic. Um, okay, let me just get rid of that. That's uh, probably a little bit too far. I should change my player craft name. New is not a good name. Okay, we have an approach info. Okay, that should be a pure inclination change, which is best done as a mid-course adjustment. Or correction. So that's what I'm going to do. Mid-course. Uh, uh, so a lot of the times when you do a inclination correction, you should do it where the orbits intersect. But there's good reasons why for an interplanetary transfer, they're actually done right in the middle. Now, very important, we want to be in line with Niobe, right? Something, a little piece of information that I would like is, uh, can we adjust the burn without, like, on another gizmo instead of trying to click on that maneuver and then have it focus on this maneuver? I don't want it to focus on this maneuver. I want to focus on Solero while adjusting that maneuver. Okay, uh, that's pretty far out still, 577. But I'd rather stay safe. And it's jittering around, even though I don't have stabilization on. It's not staying very precise. I mean, I'm not touching the joystick or anything. I'll turn RCS off. Yeah, okay, well, uh, no, it just jumped again, see? So some there's some imprecision here. So that's not great, but we'll time warp to our maneuver node, which is this 27.1 meters per second. We have 2.18 kilometers per second to do the maneuver node, capture around Solero, and then rendezvous with Niobe. Now we want power. Power seems to be okay. Yeah, we've got one of our solar panels facing the sun. To switch back and forth in order to see my battery. But I don't want to pass the maneuver. Mainly on the map view, the information I'm looking at generally is the burn information. Okay, well, let's pay attention to what's actually doing around Solero. It's probably a bit off by now. I don't even see the plan burn here. <laughs> this isn't good. But then again, it's probably gone off. It's waiting 1.39 years now. It's not showing me my encounter of Solero at all. Now I had an encounter of Solero before. Exit SY is somewhere over here. Great. Um, if I focus on Solero, will you show me these things? No, apparently not. 
Okay. I don't understand anything, as usual. But I can work with it. I bet it jumps like that, it's crazy. Yeah, it's jumping by a thousand kilometers at a time when I'm not applying thrust. Okay, well that's a thousand kilometers away. And I would like to fix that inclination more. But that's bringing it out a whole lot. I can encounter Neo B with an inclined orbit. Oh god, look at how that changes just with the RCS. Mm. I mean, I know RCS can do stuff, but sometimes it jumps around even when I'm not using RCS. But even with a maneuver, it doesn't show me the result in this view. Um, let's see, this, this view... That's clockwise. I don't want to go clockwise. Okay, that's counterclockwise. That's what I want. Let's just try this. 1.32 meters per second, though. And just turning is probably going to mess it up. Yeah, okay. Managing the maneuvers with this view is just uh, not working very well. I'm going to have to go into the SOI and make adjustments. Okay, well, hopefully we'll have the Delta V for that. But it's too sensitive out here. And it's not accurate enough. I couldn't scale the RCS thrusters any smaller. So... Okay, Celero flyby. They didn't even ask for it, but of course that's assumed. Uh, we are going the correct way around, hopefully. Um, let's just verify that Niobe is actually going this way around, and let's target Niobe now. Try and get this plan maneuver as close to me as possible. This is a time for radial and normal burns. Remember, radial and normal burns as far away from the gravitating body as possible, and uh, and then of course the prograde retrograde burns as close to it as possible. Now we're not gonna get perfectly in line with Neobi, but we can help things out a bit. Best thing is if our periapsis around Solero is also where we cross Neobi's orbit. So even though there's a high inclination, that's still better. Now I'll say 140, I'm gonna trust that its atmosphere is not that high. So yeah, and the little marker is basically where our approach is gonna cross Niobe's orbit, I think. So that's the maneuver we want to do. Still have 100% battery. And it's just a mild burn, 4.84 meters per second. That'll do the trick. Okay, that is our approach. Let's get to periapsis. Let's make sure we're still recharging. Uh, that looks like we're butt into the sun, so... Okay, Solero's over there. Let's double check that we are not now crashing into it after my RCS burn. Okay, Solero. Here we are. Okay, we should be close. And so, stabilization off, uh, west is still retro. Oh, one-fourth time. Okay, and ignition. Achievement unlocked. We have orbit, and um, so that we can line up with uh, Niobe better, we're going to keep it high. And right up there, we are going to tilt the orbit so that it's more in line with Niobe's. Yeah, we didn't do the capture burn exactly where I wanted it. Uh, that Delta V... Okay, stop making it locked. Um, whatever maneuver that was, get rid of it. D destroy, all, destroy all maneuvers. I, I don't trust any maneuver. <laughs> um, it's got this maneuver here that isn't the maneuver that we're doing right there. 
And I don't know what to do about it. I'm trying to get rid of that maneuver. And I can't get rid of that maneuver either. Yeah, I go to the map and come back. Uh, I can't get rid of that maneuver. Okay, so I can't plot a maneuver as far as I can tell. Um, somebody had said uh, bring up the menu and closing it solved some problems. Let me just see. Well, not in this case. When we pass it, maybe it'll be all right. And there's this one here too that I also don't want. <laughs> Okay, we're at our, I mean, we're close to our original Lapoapsis. Can we get rid of that now? No. <laughs> okay, fine. We want to go north. And we want to boost up our orbit a little bit. I don't know if 45 is a good estimation, but we're going to go with 45 for now until one of the two things is finished. And that's... Hopefully, going to do enough. It looks like that's too much for the inclination. We really need to boost up more and do inclination stuff. Hope I'm not overusing the RCS. So, if you have an answer for why I can't get rid of maneuvers, that would be nice. Is there a way to unlock it? Because I can't use this to get to those maneuvers. With the Delta V we have, we could do an extra step, and I think I will. What we're gonna do is we're trying we're gonna try and circularize first, and then at the place where our orbits cross, do uh, inclination change and also boost up a little bit, or uh, we'll go in a little bit, so that we can catch up with it. Yeah, I mean, because we've got plenty of Delta V. Way more than we needed for this, as it turns out. Too bad, the contracts always say launch a new vessel anyway. Start grounded. As then they could give us a contract for the other moon and we could just head on over there with the Delta V we have. Or like, uh, if they gave us a contract to get into orbit around Niobe, that would be easy too. So right around here, and we can't really see it, but we know what we need to do. We're going to need to point north to flatten our orbit with Niobe. I'm only doing this so it's easier to get an encounter. It's not super necessary. We, we could just contrive to encounter it over here or over there. I'll just do a few orbits in order to catch up. Okay, good recharging. Oh, this is too fast. Let me check my RCS fuel, I'm curious. We've used quite a lot with little maneuvers here and there. Oh, yeah, it's 76%, we're fine. Well, it's broken my orbit there. Maybe that means there's an encounter. I don't know. The theory. No, it doesn't. <laughs> now we're behind again. Gosh darn it. Show me an encounter. Is this a really... This might be like Phobos, which is really, really tiny and tough to hit. Okay, that's uh, that's very subtly inside. Maybe in this side we're even outside. Maybe we'll do a little bit more to compensate. Okay, let's see. Getting closer. Yeah, it's like Phobos. It's tiny. We're still not in its SOI according to this thing. Oh, I don't want to go up again. <laughs> um, but probably forcing the issue would be too much. Approach info. Well, well we're talking. I think 30 kilometers will be fine. Niobe flybys. Yep, it's paused. Oh, it's 
Yeah, because it's paused. Because I pressed pause. Okay. Uh, well, we're not going to stay in Yobi SOI for very long. Well, it's actually pretty long because we're in such a close orbit to it. So we got that contract fulfilled. And I'm going to put it into orbit around Yobi. Yep. And let's get it closer. Tons left. 1.62 kilometers per second. I'm embarrassed. Despite the fact that our maneuvers are still hanging out there and probably will never go away. <laughs> we have made Niobe orbit. Uh, that, uh, and come. Why are they only showing me part of my orbit? Is it gonna stay in orbit? Okay, it is staying in orbit. All right. All right, we have a probe in orbit around Niobe, and I think that's satisfactory. Let's go back to the main screen, save flight, with our N1-ish mini rocket off of the village pad. Lots of it. We could have landed on Niobe. We could have gone to another moon at the same time. Luna orbit, Luna flyby, still no Luna landing ex- I mean, we've very accidentally landed on Luna, but... Um, Alright, but we could look at the tech tree, we've got a lot of tech points. I wanted the hemisphere. That'll make those little tanks, the mob propellant tanks, a little bit better. I'm surprised there's no indication of a special contract for stuff with space capsules, but capsules but um crew i mean nominally i mean just for show we're gonna unlock crew wonder about some of these sending rovers to other planets might be good that centaur engine is not the Centaur engine I'm familiar with, I'm sure. Space capsule. But we're, we're... We'll see if they give us something with the seats. Docking port might be fascinating. I'll, I'll get docking port because I'm interested to see if we... Maybe we should just ignore the contracts and do something more interesting. We'll see about that, because I'm not particularly inspired by the contracts at the moment, so I'll think about what I want to do next time. So maybe you guys have some suggestions. We've got plenty of money, so if you have an interesting suggestion of what I should do, uh, maybe we can put it together. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.